Dame Sarah Gilbert, Dr. Catherine Green, many congratulations on winning the GQ Heroes Award tonight. How do you feel about that? It's amazing to have recognition from a sphere that we wouldn't normally expect it. I mean, we're, we're scientists, we're used to publishing peer-reviewed publications and we get a few comments on those sometimes, <laughs> but I mean, this is just a whole different level. This is recognition that the work that we did and the whole team did, and it was a very large team. We had 10 people here at the awards ceremony tonight, but there are many, many more who've worked across the UK to develop this vaccine, and that's had a major impact on people's lives, so it's great to see the recognition for that. Talking about impact on people's lives, when the pandemic started, COVID-19 came into existence, what did you think? I think at the beginning we didn't think that much. Yeah? It was for us an academic issue. Sarah tracks diseases around the world that are emerging and we monitor them. This time we thought maybe we'd see if we could make a vaccine and see how fast we could go. But the problem grew and grew throughout January, February, March and it became clear that those early steps we'd taken in January, February laid the foundation for us to be able to deliver this vaccine as quickly as possible. So at the beginning, we didn't know any more than anybody else. What was that pressure like to deliver it so quickly to save lives? There was a lot of pressure, but we had a big team of people all doing what they knew how to do. Lots of experts working in their own particular field. So the particular pressure we were under to, was to deliver quickly, to make sure that we didn't skip any important steps, but we got through all of them as fast as we could. So we were working in multiple steps in parallel, whereas we'd normally do them in sequence. So we had to think ahead all of the time and work out how we could be thinking two, three, four steps ahead instead of just doing one thing at a time. And when it was first approved, how did you feel? Oh, well, there's relief. But it was right in the middle of us still having to do things, wasn't it? So there was yeah. no there was no moment when we're like, yeah, that's done now. We can just have a rest because there was always another regulator, another thing to go on to. So it didn't stop for us and it still really hasn't stopped. Yeah, yet, there's still lots it? more to do. We're still working really hard with the team at AstraZeneca as well. Um, it's really great that we're now seeing data on the numbers of lives that have been saved by vaccinations and that's, that's fantastic to see. And events like tonight that are in person, how do you feel that that is a testament to the work that you're doing? Yeah, well, not just us, of course, other vaccination programs and all of the teams and the NHS for the rollout, because it's no point in having a vaccine if you can't get into people's arms. And that rollout in the UK has been phenomenal. So we have to give really good credit there. But it's true. We said right at the beginning, the route out of this pandemic will be vaccination. It will be vaccination for the world. It's easy for us here because we're in a good vaccination status. But there's lots of countries that wouldn't be able to have this kind of party tonight. And we need to get vaccines to them, don't we? But you have your anti-vaxxers, you have protesters. When you see them, how does that make you feel? Well, it's n normal to be concerned about new things. So what we're keen to do is to get information for the people who are worried about what's going on. There'll always be a few people who've got their own ideas and, and don't want those ideas to be changed. But most people are either very happy to take a vaccine or maybe just want a bit more information about what's going on before they're then happy to take the vaccine. But they feel it's an... an infringement on their freedom. What, what's your message? To them? Well, if you look tonight and you say, no, this is what gives you your freedom. We're against a virus and it's the virus that takes away our freedom. That's our common enemy. And together we can prove that science and progress and community endeavours are the route to, to delivering freedom back to us. And as a team and as a community is the way that we do that. And are you worried about the variants? What's the way forward? There's a lot of talk of boosters. Yes, so some people will definitely need to be boosted, the people who have compromised immune systems who really didn't respond well to vaccines the first time round. Uh, we'll need to keep all of that under review and look at what needs to be done in the future. So there's plenty more work to be done on vaccines yet. It's not cut and dried, it's not a magic bullet, um, but it really is the, the main thing that's going to make a difference in getting us out of the pandemic. And what about inspiring young women to go into STEM, how can you do that? Because there's such a shortage. Well, I mean, at the, at the entry level now, you saw our team on the stage tonight, we're full of talented, hardworking, really driven and really motivated women coming into science. Um, so it's, it's not as simple as that. We have to find structures that enable females to progress within science. We have to encourage diversity in all forms. Um, and I think one of the ways to do that is to be out there to say, look who we are and to say, look, science is a really fun job. It's a creative job. It's a dynamic job. It requires diverse skill sets, different kinds of intellect, different kinds of input. And anybody who's out there, no matter what you look like, 
is the person to come to us and, and start a career in science. Um, the, the days of the old middle-aged white guy are over. We want them too, but we want everybody else as well. Yeah. We have people who work with people, people who work with data and everything in between. So we need all of those different skills in vaccine development. And it's a really important field and we hope more people will be interested in going into it in the future. What keeps you up at night? Uh, nothing at the moment. I'm, I, after, after, after 19 months of, of hard work, I'm just sleeping. So. <laughs> Finally, we get some kit. <laughs> and is that a message to everyone that Everybody people can relax? Like, oh, <laughs> chill out a bit. I mean, take precautions where we need to. Uh, look after our elderly and our vulnerable, yeah. of course. Yeah. But maybe the end is in sight.